Hey everybody, my name is David Victor. My company is called Boom Cycle Digital Marketing. I am the author of this wonderful, amazing blog about SEO for music stores. So if you're watching this, I'm going to assume, presume that you are a you know music store, either involved in marketing the music store, maybe you own the music store, and you're looking for ways to uh, compete against the uh, you know the sweet waters and uh, musicians, friends, and guitar centers of the world. Uh, so it's not easy, you know, there's a lot of money potentially to be made in this kind of a, a business, selling, uh, you know, expensive guitars and other types of musical equipment. So um, you have to compete, right? So you have to do things uh, better than the big guys. And the one advantage, probably the main advantage you have as an independent music store is the fact that you can be all things to your local um, customers, whereas, you know, the larger like guitar centers and Sweetwaters have to kind of be all things to everybody. So you have a little bit of a built-in advantage there. One of the first things to keep in mind is, and I mentioned this in the article, is that, you know, if you're visible, you are an option. And if you're invisible, you're just not an option. So you want to be visible, meaning findable, when people are searching for the kinds of things that you sell. Uh, so either you know, uh, musical instruments or services, maybe lessons or rentals and things like that. Um, you want to be visible when, when somebody's looking for you know, a flugelhorn to rent or violin for sale or something like that, depending on what you stock, of course. You want to show up. So you want to show up in that Google map listing. Uh, you want to show up in the regular, what are they called, the SERPs, which is the search engine result pages, you know, those blue links that they have. And of course you want uh, maybe videos to be visible. There's all kinds of media that, um, you know, more and more Google is uh, showing when people are searching for things because they know people want a video a lot of times, like this wonderful video. Let's talk about who your best customers are. So we have a client uh, that is a local music store fighting the good fight against all the big guys. And uh, most of their uh, customers are kind of um, interested in, you know, the higher end instruments, not say most of them, but a good majority of them are interested in, you know, higher end instruments. They're uh, guitar enthusiasts, um, you know, maybe baby boomers. They've got some, you know, uh, disposable income to spend on things that they find interesting. And fortunately, some of those things are uh, guitars. And so they'll buy, you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar guitars and that's good for my you know client so if you are fortunate enough to have those kinds of customers you know it makes your marketing uh, job easier right because you can have a budget uh, for those types of things if you're you know kind of on the more economical end and you're dealing more with beginners and those types of instruments you know of course you can make up for it with volume right you make a little bit less on each sale but you make up for it by the number of uh, items that you actually sell so uh, speaking of selling, e-commerce, right? Do you have an e-commerce website? Um, our client uh, has a Shopify website. Um, I tried to get them on WooCommerce because it works so oh, much better with WordPress, which is where we get most of our SEO from, but uh, they love Shopify. So we have uh, worked with them uh, with their Shopify and got it to, you know, play ball with us. And basically it's, it's working as well as um, any of the WordPress websites that we work with now that we've sort of, uh, you know, come to grips with it. In any good web design, you want to really deliver a punch the first time somebody hits your page, right? And they call this the hero section, you know, the very first things they see. So guitarists and, you know, musicians are gearheads. They want to show gear. Um, people um, and shoppers are going to be dealing with other people, right? So um, I tend to want to show, you know, a lot of gear, but also the people that work there, right? Um, and customers, you know, um, natural shots. Photography is a big deal. Um, we have a great photographer that we recommend that used to work with, uh, used to be Clorox's uh, lead photographer, uh, Mr. Ron Essex. You should check out ronessexphotography.com. Uh, he will uh, set you up. And um, we had him work with our local client and he did a, just a brilliant job and they got fantastic uh, shots. So stuff we can use for blogs and advertisements and, and uh, YouTube videos and things like that. Uh, and we have used the heck out of them. That hero section should really communicate basically five things. Number one, 
what's what, what's the transformation you're promising? You know, what are you promising to deliver? You know, great playing experience. You know, uh, great atmosphere. Um, you know, try out all our instruments, whatever it is, what, whatever your brand promise is. And then under that brand promise, you have um, a little statement about how you make that happen. You know, we leave you alone and let you, you know, go into our amp room and try out the amps and, you know, those types of things. Plenty more to talk about with that. I'm just giving you a rough overview. Um, you want to make taking the action that you want them to take easy, like, hey, you know, find us now or call us now or, you know, shop online. You know, whatever your core thing is that you want uh, your best customers to do, you want them to, you know, you want it to be easy. So, you know, you want to make that button or buttons very obvious and prominent. The other thing that's really critical in that main hero section, which every page has a hero section, right? You want to sort of do this regularly with every kind of page is that social proof. Like who else has had success here and uh, had a good experience shopping here at this beautiful local music store? So that's kind of some you know, major bullet points about uh, web design and e-commerce. You want your website to load quickly. So that's another thing, you know, a lot of times, you know, this, with this beautiful photography, you know, a photographer will send you an eight megabyte image and, you know, somebody will just post it up on their website. It's not what you need to do. You need to size it right. Uh, there's a tool we use a lot called squoosh.app. S-Q-U-O-O-S-H dot app, free tool. And you can uh, drop your images in there and make them web peas um, and resize them too. And basically make them small so they load fast. They'll still look great, but they load much, much quicker. And uh, it's definitely something, it's probably the biggest problem for uh, web page load speed, um, page loading time is uh, those images. So you wanna do, when you're doing SEO, you wanna create quality content. And uh, how do you do that? Well, um, one way that we do it is we look and see what kinds of content our best customers are interested in and what kinds of content is working for our biggest competitors, right? If they have an article about you know, how to fly with a guitar or something, maybe we're gonna write an article about how to fly with a guitar. Um, you, know, you look at what is reacting and what is driving traffic to those sites and then you basically reverse engineer it and build your own. You know, you do your own point of view, your own take on it, come up with your own content. And you can look at every site out there. There's some big uh, independent music stores out there that you can get some really good uh, information on. You can also use Google Search Console, which is a tool that's free from Google. And you can see what pages are driving the most traffic. You know, for example, if it's a blog article, um, you can see that, hey, this blog article is driving a bunch of traffic. Let's add a video to it, or let's add an infographic to it, or let's add some art to it, or maybe some audio or something. Somebody playing, you know, content about, you know, Gibson guitars. And so you say, hey, let's have a video of somebody playing one of these Gibson guitars in our store. You know, just, <laughs> you know, it's supporting content. It breaks up the text. Um, and basically what it does is give Google more of what it's already rewarding you for. So uh, it's another strategy we use a lot. So Google Maps, I mentioned them before. Um, there's kind of two main things with maps. Um, one is, you know, somebody on mobile searching for, you know, music store, local, you know, guitar lessons near me or something. Boom, you want that map to show up. You want to be on that map. And right now, as of the date of this recording, Google typically shows three organic listings. It might show one ad. Uh, depending on if anyone's advertising on that map, but you want to be in those organic listings. So there's a lot to be done, starting with your name, address, and phone number, or NAP, basically being consistent. If you're called Joe Blows Music, uh, then you want to stay Joe Blows Music on every piece of information all over the internet. You don't want to say Joe Blows Music Shop or Joe Blow's Guitar Store or something like that. You wanna always use the same name down to the abbreviations. Same thing with uh, you know your address. If you say street one place, you shouldn't say ST dot in another place. Uh, phone number, always use the same formatting. Basically what we do is we look at what Google already thinks about us and then we use that and say, fine, that's what we're gonna use everywhere because Google is what we're trying to uh, make happy basically with all our optimizations. The other huge, 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 huge thing and I cannot emphasize this enough, is reviews, right? Any traffic you drive to your site or to your Google map listing is gonna be worthless if you have a bunch of crappy reviews in there. So there's some interesting things about reviews, and one of them is that um, 
a review that's five star is not generally trusted as much as a review that's, um, or loved, let's say, as much as a review that's 4.8, 4.9. I, mean, I think 4.9 is the sweet spot, right? Five star review with, you know, 358 reviews means something funny is going on. I mean, there's no way that many people would have the perfect experience with me, right? Uh, I love my clients to death and I think they're amazing and the best music store that I've ever dealt with, but people have bad days or something happens or, you know, the customer is just maybe an angry person or whatever and you get those, you know, those reviews come in. So the reviews that are, you know, the, the, the amalgamation total score of reviews, that's 4.9, 4.8, 4.9. That's the perfect spot to be in it. It shows realism. It shows hot. You're going to be as high as you need to be. And of course, Google doesn't rank, uh, you know, on the map just based on reviews alone. It's one of, uh, I forget how many, 20 maybe uh, core ranking factors for the map. Um, it is the most visible thing out there and a lot of times you know uh, businesses will get a little bit of religion and go well, we're gonna you know crank away on our reviews and they should if their reviews are crap so we've had one client that started out uh, not a music store but a client started out with a 2.6 uh, review uh, star review right so anybody we drove to that map listing is gonna go something horrible happened here I'm out of here so you know they had like three five-star reviews and two one-star reviews or whatever adds up to 2.6 uh, mathematicians, you know, write in, feel free to write in. But that is suboptimal, right? You, you've got to raise that review up. So what do you do? Well, here's the good news. You can talk to your best customers, many of whom love you, right? Every store has, you know, great customers and maybe not as great and average or whatever. Find those best customers and um, maybe have a QR code in the store, <clears throat> maybe have it flipped around so people don't see it. And then when you see somebody you want them to review, oh, you know what, you can review us. Uh, kind of a nice little <clears throat> uh, trick to do to get, you know, sort of filter to only get the best uh, reviews, right? And basically this only happens slowly. I've never seen, you know, 20 reviews come in. Now, maybe you're the exception to the rule, but for the most part, you know, people are gonna, they're gonna do it, they're gonna start to do it, they're gonna stop doing it, they get a phone call or whatever. It's gonna take time to build up those reviews. You really don't want 20 reviews happening in one day, but you know, two, three, four, five a month, uh, you know, for a small music store is realistic and will help, right? If you've got a, you know, 3.8 or something, you wanna get to that 4.8, 4.9, um, there's some math involved, but basically you, you just got to keep getting those five-star reviews. And you know, the good news is you'll probably never get to 5.0 with a few bad ones, uh, you know, enough bad ones on there. So competitors sometimes leave bad reviews and are anonymous. Um, we've had, you know, clients where that's happened and they just, they're not the most amazing people out there, let's say. Okay. Uh, enough about reviews. So backlinks, right? What are backlinks? Well, backlinks are a hyperlink from uh, one website pointing to hopefully your website and hopefully a good backlink. So there are geo-relevant backlinks, meaning links that come from local businesses. So if you are in San Antonio, Texas, and you get a link from a flower store or something, uh, saying, hey, you should check these guys out, or whatever, it seems like, well, that's not really relevant at flower store, but it's geo relevant, right? Because they're in the same city, basically. Um, the other kinds of links are sort of topically relevant links. So, you know, if you get a link from a manufacturer, right? Uh, you carry PRS guitars and Paul Reed Smith on their main website links to you, then those are links that are hyper relevant, right? It's coming from the manufacturer. Plus the manufacturer has a good authoritative website. You really want those links. In fact, one of my big tips is for everything you stock, you should do your due diligence, go to those manufacturers' websites and make sure those links, you know, they have links pointing to you as one of their dealers, right? That pretty much covers most of it um, in terms of the broad brushstrokes of SEO for music stores. I hope you've learned something today. We've shared a laugh. Maybe we didn't share a laugh, but we had some fun and uh, told some stories and hopefully you know a little bit more uh, than you did before about local SEO and specifically SEO for music stores. My name is David Victor, Boom Cycle Digital Marketing. Get in touch with us if you feel overwhelmed and crazy and uh, can't handle 
everything that you need to handle to do your own homespun SEO. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Bye.